So, if y'all got any questions, ask your questions. Because now, yeah, I said, I've taught. Now I want to engage. You've been here for a minute. You got a question? How you doing, sis? Do you know why we up here? Who? Okay, what you got? Why we up here, sis? That's correct. We teaching what people haven't taught us. I'm gonna go over dress code real quick. Give me uh, Exodus 28:42. You know. Do you believe that God has a dress code? Okay. God does have a dress code. Are all of our people following it? No, they're not. Are but we're gonna. Are we aware of what it is? Because I'm not. Uh, yeah, a lot of our people are not. That's why we out here. Watch this. Exodus chapter 28 and verse 42. Come on. And thou shalt make them linen breeches to cover their nakedness reach. from the loins even unto the thighs. They shall reach and they shall be upon Aaron and his son. So God gave us a dress code when we came out of Egypt. Does anybody know what the Egyptians used to wear? I don't know what you call it. Similar, yeah, similar to a toga. Huh? Yes, yes. Didn't have nothing to cover the man's private parts. Okay, give me Leviticus 18 and 1 and come right back. Look it out. Alright, come on. Leviticus chapter 18 and verse 1. Watch this. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, and say unto them, I am the Lord your God. After the doings of the land of Egypt. So after the doings of the land of Egypt, read. Wherein ye dwell. Wherein we used to dwell, read. Shall ye not do. There it is. Shall ye not do. So if God told us when we got out of Egypt, don't do what the Egyptians did, and I'm going to give you a dress code, what do y'all think we should be doing while we're in Egypt again? Bring it out. We should still be honoring God's dress code, right? We shouldn't be dressing like the Egyptians, a.k.a. Americans. Right. We shouldn't be doing that. Now let's go back to it. Uh, Exodus 28, 42. And then I want Deuteronomy 22 and 5. Come on. Exodus chapter 28 and verse 42. And thou shalt make them linen breeches to cover their nakedness. And y'all know what breeches is. Yeah, what, what are breeches? Child, pull up your breeches. What, what that mean? Pull up your pants. There you go. Pull up your pants. God gave pants to who? The man or the woman? The man, there you go. God gave pants to the man. Now, Deuteronomy 22 and 5. Watch this. Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 5. Come on. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. So what type of garments you think sisters supposed to wear? Dresses. Yeah, That's right. dresses. So I'll I tell you this. If I was up here in a dress, would y'all have stopped and listened to me? Nah, hey, 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 hey. Well, did that, what that big joker uh, doing wearing a dress? That ain't right. Yes, sir. So what? Who wore one of his clothes back in the day? Which man? Well, we just went, yes, we just went over that. When we got out of Egypt, God instituted that the Israelite man wear pants. So we wear a garment. I don't know if you followed us before, but yeah, we got garments, but you always got the pants underneath. Well, uh, Leviticus 18 and 1. 18 and 1. No, you're correct. We did, when we were in Egypt, yeah, we dress, we used to dress like that. God said, no, when y'all get out, now I'm going to give you a righteous law to put a separation between a woman and a man. But the Egyptians, they're doing the same thing America's doing. Gender neutral stuff. The man in a woman's bathroom is the same now. And, and that's true. That's what they're trying to push. Egypt was already doing that. And America is trying to do the same thing again. God said, no, there's a difference between a man and a woman. Read that again. Deuteronomy chapter 22 and verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. So a woman shouldn't wear what? She shouldn't wear pants. A man shouldn't wear a dress. And that's pretty simple. How, you know, before they put this gender neutral stuff in, how did you tell the difference between a man's restroom and a woman's restroom? 
The sign on the door. What the sign on the door is depicted? How you know? One had a dress, other one had on pants. That's how you know. That's how you know, but this is the land of confusion. That's what this is. God, uh, 1 Corinthians 14 and 34. We still got to follow God even though everybody else ain't. We still got to follow God. Watch this. Two scriptures. Watch this. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 33. For God is not the author of confusion. There it is. God's not the author of confusion. Meaning what? They may say that a man can wear a dress. A rapper just did that with Kid Cudi. A rapper just put on a dress and perform on Saturday Night Live, I believe. Yes, sir. That's confusing. Right. It's very confusing. You're teaching the youth. It's like, Mom, is that okay for us? It's not okay. Read it again. For God is not the author of confusion. But, now, I'm sorry. But of peace. But of peace. Acts uh, 5 and 29. So we got to ask ourselves this question. Although America says it's okay, does God say it's okay? And everything we do, we got to search the scriptures and find out if what we're doing is right or what we're doing is wrong. Right. Read. Acts chapter 5 and verse 29. Then Peter and the other apostles answered and said, We are to obey God rather than men. There it is. We are to obey God rather than man. That's what we got to do. Yes, sir. My question was about, like, on the confusion. So one of my confusions was, why do they interchange the uh, title God? I mean, for God, I'm not telling you, you got God, Yahweh, or Jehovah, or something, I think is another term that they use in there. So my question is, why the interchange between God and Jehovah? Because that's confusing to me. If you're talking about God, who is God, what is God, can you give me some insight on that? Yeah, absolutely. Give us Psalms 38 and 18. Yeah. Psalms 138 and 2. All right, read that for us. Psalms chapter 138 and verse 2. I will worship toward thy holy temple and praise thy name for thy loving kindness and for thy truth. Because your question was about the different names or titles, right? He said he will praise thy name, read. For thou hast magnified thy word above all thy name. It says God has magnified his word, meaning what? His commandments above all of his names. Now watch this. So, you, so your next question would be like, how do I know who I'm worshiping? I've heard that before. Give me 2 Timothy 2 and 19. Read out. Don't worry. When you magnify his word, he automatically knows. Because a lot of brothers, they will go tit for tat about the pronunciation of his name in a language that they don't even know, right? But they'll say his name is Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, Ahaya, Asha, Ahaya, Yahweh, Yahweh. They'll say all of that, but they don't keep his commandments. Right, right. We just read that he magnifies his word above all his name. That's right. Watch this. 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse 19. Come on. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. It said the foundation of God standeth sure no matter what. No matter what. Watch this. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are his. God knows who are his. How do you think he's going to know who's his? Those who magnify his word. That's Those right. who keep the commandments. Right. That's how he's going to know who belongs to him. Read. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ. So if we want to talk about the names, everyone that nameth the name of Christ, because some say Yeshua, some say Joshua, some say all of these different names, right? Read. Depart from iniquity. How about that? Instead of arguing about a name, how about you keep God's commandments? Right. That's all it's about. Christ yeah, go ahead. Did that answer your question? Yeah. Thank you. The next question is, Let me get my, my, my point of view first, and then I get to the question. All right. When I was born, I was one year old, then two, then 10, then 24, then 32. Not 32, then six, then 14. So why is the, so my life is linear. I start, I gotta start and I go on. Why is the book of life, which is the most important thing to me, my life, why is that book written 
That, that makes no sense to me. So can you explain that? Give me Isaiah 28. Give me Isaiah 28. Because this is not like a, like a novel. Right. This book is not written like that. And even if you read it like a novel, you still ain't going to understand it. Right. You got to be spiritual to understand it. He'll give you the... I'll show you. I'm going to show you. I'm just setting the preface. That's all. Watch this. Isaiah, chapter 28 and verse 9. Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? So if you want to understand this Bible, if you want to learn the knowledge of this Bible, this is the precept to show you. Watch this. Them that are weaned from the milk. Stop. Go to First Peter 2 and 1. Come right back. It says you have to be weaned from the milk. We're going to show you what the milk is. All right, First Peter 2 and 1. Come on. First Peter chapter 2 and verse Verse 1, wherefore, laying aside all malice. So, it starts off, he says, laying aside all malice, all evil thinking, you know, read. And guile. And guile. And hypocrisy. And being a hypocrite. And envyings. And envyings. Isn't these things that's prevalent in the black and Hispanic community? Absolutely. This is how all the murders happen. Read. And all evil speaking. And all evil speaking. So, he's telling you right now. If you want to understand this Bible, you got to turn away from sin. Hold on, hold on, what's that? Hold on, I know, I know, save it. We coming right back. I'm going to deal with you. I'm going to wait. Yeah, I'm going to wait. All praise to the Father. So it's said in the preface, it's like, hey, if you want to understand, if you want to get to the milk, that is the milk. Learn how to control your spirit. And how do you do that? With the laws of God. That's step number one. Read on. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word. That ye may grow thereby. That's the start, but eventually you will begin to grow. But you ain't going to grow. You ain't going to understand the other breakdowns unless you can get yourself together by keeping God's commandments. <laughs> That's the milk. Now go back to Isaiah. Come on. Isaiah chapter 28 and verse 9. Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast. Similar to as a child. You can't give a child meat, can you? They'll choke. Same thing with this Bible. You ain't just going to open this and understand it. You'll choke. It'll be too hard from you, for you. Read. For a pre-sale must be upon a pre-sale. Bible's telling us how to study. It says for what? For a pre-sale. Must be upon precept. Precept upon precept. Line upon line. Watch this. Line upon line. Here a little and there a little. Meaning what? You may read something in the New Testament, but you got to search and find where it was written before time in the old right. so you can have the full understanding. And that takes time, dedication, most importantly, obedience to the laws of God. Right. Give me Psalms 111 and 10. Watch this. It'll make pay you doing, sister. Watch this. Psalms 111 and 10. The book of Psalms, chapter 111 and verse 10. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So it says, the fear of the Lord, that's the beginning to wisdom. Watch this. A good understanding. So if you want to understand this Bible, read. Have all day that do his commandment. That's why you wonder, it's like certain things in the Bible, you don't know what's going on because you're not keeping God's commandments. Right. The only way to grow thereby is to adhere to the laws and commandments of this Bible. Right. That's the only way to do it. All right? What's your next question? So am I to understand that the average 27-year-old can't just pick that up and read it? No. You got to be born again. You got to okay. become a new creature. Yeah, okay. John 3 and 3. A lot of people just think that this is words on a piece of paper. You crazy. You crazy. This is life. These words are life. Sure. Yeah, I get that. But the problem that I'm having is I'm living life. No, 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 no. I'm going to show you. Can I show you something? Sure. Give me that in Proverbs 7 and 2. Give me Proverbs 7 and 2. Watch this. Now, I ain't talking about that. You're spiritually dead still. Is that God's. Watch this. Proverbs chapter 7 and verse 2. Keep my commandments and live. Right now you're not living. Give me Proverbs 21 and 16 again. You're not living right now. 
Proverbs chapter 21 and verse 16. The man that wandereth out of the way of understanding shall remain in the congregation of the dead. That's you. You won't be living until you keep God's commandments. So in other words, this muscle up here in his head that the Creator gave him, that it, only get, it only gets to work out by asking questions and using it. If I don't use it, then it stays dumb. You telling me that, that I ain't say nothing. I'm at no, based on what's in there. Yeah. I'm asking to that. Yeah. What's that? Uh, lean not on your own understanding. The creation gave the Creator gave me this muscle to use, but He gave me no instructions to use it. That's a lie. That's the instructions you're telling me. There's the instructions right but there. But those instructions won't work for me if I'm a little child growing up until I'm 27. Because Give me Deuteronomy say, 6 and 7. No. Because the way we grew up, my brother, right, right. was wrong. Right, right. And that's why it's so hard for our people to grasp this knowledge. I'm going to give you two scriptures. Deuteronomy 6 and 6, read down, and then Proverbs 22 and 6. Right, I'm going to no. give you two scriptures, all right? Watch this. Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 6. These be the words which I command thee this day shall be in thy heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. That's the thing. We weren't taught this as children. God woke us up later, but we still had to humble ourselves and throw away everything. The same thing that the uh, burning bush, Christ through the burning bush told Moses. He said, take off your, your shoes. This is holy ground. Meaning what? I knew that you grew up in all the ways of the Egyptians, but when it comes to the law of this Bible, the knowledge of this Bible, that Egyptian knowledge means absolutely nothing. Right. Same thing with us. We gotta let go of everything we was taught and serve God. Read it again. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children, and shalt talk of them when thou sittest in thy house, and when thou walkest by the way. See, there you go. Uh, Proverbs 22 and 6. You and me, we ain't grow up like that. But guess what? My son, he grew up like that now. That's right. It's about restoring the decayed estate of our nation. Right. Each one teach one. Right. If you know better, you do better. Right. right. Read it. Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 6. Train up a child in the way he should go. Even though you and me may have not received that, now we have the opportunity to do that. Even if you don't have a physical child, give me Sirach chapter 4, verse 10. You know. Even if you don't have a physical child, you can still help somebody. Right. Give them the life that you didn't have. Right. Now you know what life is. Keep it God's commandments. Yes. Right. Read it. Sirach chapter 4 and verse 10. Be as a father unto the fatherless. See that thing right there? Be a father to the fatherless. And I ain't just got to be a little man a so-called father to people older than me because guess what I've been around longer in right. this fight that's right and I can help and teach them and guide them right you understand you had a question sir yeah you're supposed to that's oh not no 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 they have to I could go over that real quick let's go to first Corinthians let's break this down oh yes yeah, you say it louder so you can hear to know if it's okay for unmarried women not to wear a So, see, see, my sister, she covered hers. She, that's why she got hers. But no, uh, whether she's married or unmarried, she's still supposed to wear her uh, head wrap, and we're going to go over that. All right, give me verse 3. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 3. No. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man. And the head of Christ is God. Right. So it's a hierarchy, right? God, Christ, man, woman, and child. Come on. Every man praying or prophesying, having his head covered, dishonoring his head. So if we was up here with our heads covered like a lot of Camp Sioux and Mitri's, we would be dishonoring Christ. Right. So that's why we teach without our head covered. Because of this scripture right here. Read. But every woman that prayed or prophesied. Say every. That's the key. Every. They say uh, single or married. Say every woman. Read. Wait. Her head uncovered. Dishonor of her head. Her head is who? The man. The man. So whether she's uh, married or not, the man would be her husband if she's married. And uh, the man would be her spiritual leader. For example, in our camp, we got some sisters who are single. They would be dishonoring me. You understand? Because I'm the leader. 
I'm the, when it talks about the angels in 1 Corinthians 11, that's going into the leaders. Paul would be considered an angel. David was considered an angel. Messengers is just going into leaders. That's all that's going into. Every system has to have her head covered. Yes, or if she's in the mist. For example, she's in the mist. We're, pro we're prophesying, which is the testimony of Jesus Christ. So she covered her head. Anytime the scriptures come out, she got to cover her head. All right? Yes, ma'am. Now, for example, like my wife, this is what she do. When she go to work, no, nah, she don't have it covered. Whenever, like, say, let's say we going out to eat after work. They, uh, come to my job, we'll ride together. Me, I talk scriptures a lot. You understand? So just in conversation, somebody call, is going over the scriptures. Well, I just may talk to her and quote a scripture. She has it on, the, uh, on her seat. She's going on top. She's ready for that. A after years of experience, you know, it's like before when we first got in, she's like, babe, please don't say nothing about the scriptures. I don't got my head right now. I was like, well, sister, you need to get everything. Because I'm going to talk about the scriptures. You got to have it ready. So just cover your head. And, that, and that's how it goes. Mm -hmm. All praise to the Father. All praise to the Father. Did y'all did y'all get something today? Okay. Uh, who are God's chosen people? Israelites. Who is salvation for? Who's salvation for? Israelites. What color is God? Black. What color is Christ? Black. If you don't, do y'all know this? Okay. Where can I read about God being black? Hey, shalom, my brother. Where can I read about God? Huh? Uh, Christ is in Revelations. Let's get uh, Daniel 7 and 9 for God. So you know it. If somebody asks you, you can actually... Oh, I heard it. No, I know it. Let's read it. Daniel 7 and 9. Come on. Daniel chapter 7 and verse 9. I beheld to the thrones were cast down. Those thrones are going into the different kingdoms on the earth. So this is a vision that Daniel saw. He saw a vision in the end. In the end days, all of the kings on the earth, they're going to be dethroned. How you doing, sis? Read it again. I beheld to the thrones were cast down. Come on. And the ancients of days did sit. The ancient of days, the reason why he's referred to as the ancient of days, he has no beginning and he has no end. That's the most high God right there. Read. Whose garment was white as snow. Garment. Uh, when you wear a garment, that means you have to have a what? If you wear, garment is an article of what? Clothing. So when you wear clothes, you gotta have a what? A body. Read that part again. Whose garment? God has a body, okay? They taught you he's a puff of smoke. No, he's not. He has a body, <laughs> all right? Come on. Whose garment was white as snow? And the head of his hair. And the head of his hairs, read. Like pure wool. Like what? Like the pure wool. Who has woolly hair on the earth? So-called blacks. We have the woolly hair. Now give me his son in Daniel 10 and 5. We're going to go over Jesus Christ. The black Messiah right here. Watch this. Daniel chapter 10 and verse 5. Come on. Then I lifted up my eyes and looked and beheld a certain man clothed in linen whose loins were guarded. With fine gold, a youth fan. Come on. His body also was like the barrel. Uh -huh. And his face as the appearance of lightning. This is going into his glory. This is going into the glory of the Messiah. Watch this. And his eyes as a lamp, as lamps of fire. It's not talking about he was shooting laser beams out. He drunk wine. His eyes will be red with wine. That's what the prophecy says in Genesis 49 and 12. Read. And his arms and his feet. Now his arms and his feet. Read. Like in the color. Like in what? Like in color. Like in color. We know what color is. That's blue. That's orange. This is purple. So it says his arms and his feet. Like what? Like in color to polished brass. What color is brass? Brown. Now, last one, Revelation 1 and 14. Not only was he dark. He, I mean, not only was he brown, he was very dark. Daniel 10 and verse 5. Revelation chapter 1 and verse 14. His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow. And his eyes were as a flame of fire. There's that red and some eyes again, going in from wine, read. And his feet 
like unto fine brass. His feet like unto fine brass. So John saw the same thing Daniel saw. Read. As if they burn in a furnace. So not only was his skin color brass, it's as if they burned in a furnace. If you burn something, what color does it come out? Black. black. Yeah, so he was not just brown, he was a dark-skinned black man, like me. And that's a beautiful thing. You know, I read that, I get excited, because I know my Savior looked like me. That's a beautiful thing. Have you ever heard that before, sis? You never heard that before. How do you feel about that? You should feel good. See, that's beautiful right there. I'm going to give you some more good news. Give me Luke 1 and 68. What if, what if we showed you in the Bible that God allowed all of this bad stuff to happen to us just to deliver us and put us on top. What if, I, what if I showed you that? Would you be okay with that? Because a lot of people, people have a problem with that. They get very angry with us, but we're just reading the Bible. I'm gonna read this, watch this. The book of Luke, chapter one and verse 68. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. He didn't say, blessed be the Lord God of all nations. He said, blessed be the Lord God of Israel. Israel is a nation of people. What? The so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans. He said, blessed be that God. Read. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. Read. For he has visited and redeemed his people. His people. His possessive. He has a certain people. He created all people, but he has a specific people. Read. And have raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of his servant David. For us, this possessor began. That horn of salvation is Jesus the Christ. When you read about horn, that's also going into kingship, rulership. He's gonna be the king. Read. As he spake by the mouth of his holy prophet. He spoke all throughout the Old Testament. We read earlier in Ezekiel that prophesied about Christ. So he's been mentioning Christ to come to save the Israelites from Genesis to Revelation. So what is Christianity teaching? They're not teaching what's in the Bible. Right. Read. Which have been since the world began. Since the world began, meaning what? Adam was a prophet. You understand? People always try to say, oh, the Bible was created here. And it's like, well, what about Adam? Wasn't he the first man? You understand? <laughs> this has all the knowledge. Right. No other book can make with this Bible. Right. Read. That we should be saved. Everybody? That we, the Israelites, he's the God of Israel. He just said it at the beginning of verse 68. That what? That we should be saved from our enemy. And this is the New Testament. It's not the old. This is in the New Testament. Ain't that what they say we should follow? What are we reading? That Christ is going to come save us from our enemies. Right. Read it again. That we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us. See? You think God don't know that the white man hates our guts? He know that. Right. But he say, if you keep his commandments and wait for him, he said, I'm going to deliver you from that. Right. That's the gospel. That's some really good news. Life is hard for the black man and black woman. Hispanic man and Hispanic It's hard for us. But God's saying, hey, just be patient. Right. Give me uh, Revelations 14 and 12. He said, we got to be patient and wait on him. Right. Well, as we wait, we got to get ourselves together. Right. Got to start keeping God's commandments. And then he know that we're serious. You understand? And in that day, if we hold strong to the faith, he'll deliver us. We got to believe that thing. Read. Revelation chapter 14 and verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. We're the saints according to the scriptures. The Israelites are the saints. Not though um, St. Patrick, all that garbage. No, they made that up. That ain't in the Bible. We are the saints of God. Read. Here are they that keep the commandments of God. This is the patience. We got to keep his commandments. Read. And the faith of Jesus. And the faith of Jesus. Because a lot of people get weary. Give me that 2 Peter 3 and 3. A lot of people get weary and they're going to give up. They ain't going to believe it. They may be with us for a few years and say, man, I don't know if I can keep doing this. And they're going to give up the fight. And they're going to miss out on living forever. Those are called scoffers. They're going to be turncoats in those days. God warned us of that too. Is that what I want? First Peter yeah. chapter 3 and verse 3. Watch this, family. Knowing this, that there shall come in the last day. In the last days. Brothers and sisters, we're living in the last days right now. Right. Okay, watch this. Shall come 
in the last days, scoffers walking after their own love. Meaning what? Instead of keeping God's commandments, they want to be adulterers. They want to be thieves. They want to usurp authority. Usurp authority. They want to do all of those things instead of holding fast, instead of being patient and keeping God's commandments. Read on. And saying, where is the promise of his coming? They gave up the faith. They say, man, we've been doing this for 20 years. He still ain't come back. Man, he ain't coming back. That's what's going to happen. A lot of people are going to turn from the faith. Read it again. And saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. They talking about, hey man, all of our forefathers died. Hey, uh, when uh, Christ uh, uh, was returned into heaven in Acts 1, when he uh, ascended back into heaven, everybody thought it was the end right then. Rem imagine that. Imagine seeing Christ that's with you get caught up by a chariot and you see two big black angels in the sky. You would think that's like an alien invasion. Hey, everything's about to end. No. He said, we still got to be here for a dispensation of time. Right. So a lot of people thought the end was right then. And guess what? They died. Believing that the end was in that time. So that's what they're saying. They're like, hey, man, Paul and all the apostles, man, they were murdered. And they was believing it didn't happen. Same thing's going to happen in our time. That's what a lot of people going to think. Read. Verse 4. And saying, where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. For this, they were will for this, they willingly are ignorant of. They are willingly ignorant, read, come on. That by the word of God, the heavens were of old, and the earth standing out of the waters, and in the water, where whereby that's just going into the earth, like the, the outer space. That's considered the waters too. That's all it's talking about. Read. Yes. Yes, sir. Whereby the world that then was being overflowed with water. When did that happen? When was the world overflowed with water? Huh? In the beginning. Noah, right? So it's saying the same word, which is the word of God. That same word. Because God prophesied. He told Noah to build that ark years before the flood actually came, right? By the same word that destroyed the world with water, read. With water perish, but the heavens and the earth, which are now by the same word. By the same word of God, read. Are kept in store, reserved unto fire. Reserved unto what? Reserved unto fire. That's nuclear fire. World War Three. Habakkuk 2 and 5. Check it out. World War III, all of the other nations, guess what? They're going to get tired of bully America. And you know what they're going to do? They're going to turn on America. And they're going to press the button. And all of those missiles are going to come over here. That's the fate of America. The reason why we out here teaching y'all, so y'all don't have to go down with America. That's the sincerity and that's the seriousness of why we're doing what we're doing. Right. We know America's going to be destroyed. Right. But you don't have to go down with America. You follow? You with me? Uh, what I call? Before you read that, give me Revelations 18 and 4. Right. Out. This is what this is about. Why you see us on the highways and the hedges. So we can compel y'all to come in and get your lives right. When them bombs come, you can be delivered. I'm telling you, that's what is going to happen just like that. You will see the missiles. You'll see them. You'll see the people dropping dead. But if you did what you're supposed to do, you'll be delivered out of that. Read it. Revelations chapter 18 and verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people. Get out of Babylon, the people of God. It's not talking about physically taking a plane. No, remember, America rules the whole world. You ain't escaping America no matter where you are. I've traveled to Africa. I've traveled to South America. I've traveled to Europe. I've traveled to all of these places. Guess what? America got their hand everywhere. I've seen it with my own eyes. You can't escape America. You can't. Read it again. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people. 
that ye may not, that ye be not partakers of her sin. Meaning what? America will pay for the bloodshed and the violence and the rape, the pillaging, the rob robbery, the murderers that they did against the people of God. What? Now, that wouldn't make no sense for us to suffer all of that and then suffer when they get their punishment. What? I want to be delivered. I don't want to go down with the same people who did that to me. Give me Jeremiah 51 and 6. You got to think, like, hold on, wait a second, man. Why I got to go down for no? I'm going to get my life right and be delivered because that's what God set out in the first place. He never meant for us to be on the bottom. You know what got us on the bottom? Us not listening to God. Right. Us doing what we want to do. That's why he put us in slavery. It's just like a prison sentence. Eventually, it's going to be over. And sometimes you get out early on good behavior. It's time to plan a prison break. Well, Ed, we can't do it by ourselves. It's got to be through the most high. Right. We can't do it ourselves. We've tried that. Marcus Garvey tried that. Malcolm X tried that. Right. It ain't going to work. Okay? Sis, if you have any, hey, give us a call. Come to the school. It's an hour 30. Next Sabbath, Saturday, 3 o'clock. Come to school, sis. All right. Watch this. Jeremiah, chapter 51 and verse 6. Come on. Flee out of the midst of Babylon. God says flee out of the midst of Babylon, which is America. Read. And deliver every man his soul. That's the key. We got to deliver our souls. Meaning what? We can't do the things of America, of the things of Babylon. We can't eat what they eat. We cannot eat pork, crab, shrimp, and lobster. We can't do that. That's what they do. You understand? We got to come out of the way of their thinking and come and serve the Most High God of Israel. What? Read it again. Flee out of the midst of Babylon and deliver every man his soul. Be not cut off in her iniquity god is telling you this is going to be destroyed because of their sins he just simply saying keep my commandments and live is that hard is that hard to uh do what god tell us to do it ain't, but you got to know what it is beforehand there you go you must once, be taught because once i'm 14 years once i'm 14 you years keep going in negativity backwards, bro. I'm you're just, going backwards bro I'm, you know the best thing for you to do and no disrespect be quiet because you have to be taught. You admitted it. You don't know. Guess what? I do. I do know. And that's why I'm out here and all of these men are out here to teach you. We do know. Read it. Chapter 8 and verse 30. No. And Philip ran thither to him and heard him read the prophet Isaiah and said, Understandest what thou readest? So Philip heard the Ethiopian eunuch. He was reading the prophet Isaiah, that's Esaias. He heard him reading it in his uh, chariot, which, you know, the cart, the horse and chariot. He heard him reading it, and he's stumbling. Then he asked him, do you understand what you're reading? Watch what the Ethiopian eunuch said to Philip. And he said, how can I? How can I understand it, read? Except some man should guide me. You got to be guided. You got to be taught. I had to be taught. I didn't just immediately come out here and start teaching as soon as I was taught. I had to study and I had to be taught and ask questions. A lot. All of us got to do that. As I'm out here, you could be out here. Same with you, same with you. Y'all could do the same thing, same with you. Understand that thing. It's not us. It's the most high God. He's doing this in the midst, in the midst of all of this. But you got to be taught. We got to humble. Give me a second. That's 14 and 13. You, you have know. to be taught. You got to humble down. Give me 2nd uh, Corinthians 14, 34, then verse 13. You got to humble down. You got to be taught. And once you learn, then you can help somebody else. Wow. But you can't help nobody else right now. All right, watch this. 2nd Andrews, chapter 14, and verse 34. Therefore, it shall be that ye will subdue your own understanding. That's the same thing that Moses did. When it came to the burning bush and Christ was speaking to him to that, uh, through that bush, he subdued his own understanding. He threw out all the knowledge that the Egyptians taught him and he followed Christ, followed the Most High. We got to do the same thing. We got to subdue and put on the back burner everything that we was taught. And we got to learn this Bible all over again. Verse 13. Watch this. 
Second address, chapter 14 and verse 13. Come on. Now, therefore, set thy house in order and reprove thy people. So the first thing we got to do, we can't go out to the streets if our house ain't order. If my wife is bossing me around calling me nigga, I can't come out here and teach you how to be a man. <laughs> how can I I'm gonna do that? If my kid is running into the house flicking me off, I can't come out here and teach you how to raise your kids. I gotta set my house in order first. Right. I gotta apply the laws of God in my house first. Then I could come teach you. Y'all follow? You with me? This ain't the Christian church. Christian church, they do whatever the hell they want and they expect you to follow them. And not just that, they expect you to give them money. We ain't asking for nothing. Right. It's our old gas money that got us up here in Dothan today. You understand? Come on. Now, therefore, set thy house in order and reprove thy people. But that's the next step, that's what we're doing. We out here reproving our people. We telling our sisters, don't wear pants, don't wear shorts, wear dresses. We telling our brothers, grow a beard. We telling our brothers, don't have side chicks, only have one wife. Right. This is what we teach them, we're teaching the laws of God. Yes, that's Lord. what's gonna heal us as a people. Give me Psalms 107 and 20. Bring it out. That's what's gonna heal our nation, the laws of God. And it's not hard, then give me 1 John 5 and 3. Right. Watch this. It's very simple. Simplicity in Christ. Y'all know what makes things hard? There you go. We do. We make it very hard when God just says, just keep my commandments, and he'll take care of the rest. That's what he told us. That's what he promised us. Come on. Psalm chapter 107 and verse 20. Come on. He sent his word. God sent his word, and he sent it out here to each and every last one of y'all today. Come on. And healed them. And did what? and heal them. Understand the healing come from God. It don't come from the doctor. Understand that. He made the doctor, right? I stay. That's what I thought. He made the doctor. Understand even if you have an uh, infirmity or an ailment, you still got to be keeping God's commandments. Right. Don't think you're just going to get healed without doing what he's saying. Right. Sometimes he'll show mercy just so you can be around a little bit longer so you can hear this truth. Or you can hear this knowledge. You understand? Y'all got to think like that. First John 5 and 3. Because I asked my brother earlier, is it hard to keep the commandments of God? He said no. And he's right. Watch this. First John chapter 5 and verse 3. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. You got to keep all of his commandments. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not covet. When you see another man's wife or his, oh yeah, oh yeah, his wife, there's no such thing as boyfriend and girlfriend in the scriptures. Right. Only uh, husband and wife. See another man's wife? No, that's off limits to you. When you see somebody else's money? No, that's off limits to you. These are the things that's going to heal the black and Hispanic community. Right. Not voting, not marching, to the commandments of God. Right. Read it again. For this is the love of God, that we keep his commandments. The only reason I'm saying it, because I see my brother doing it. Interracial marriage is wrong. God says to marry of your own people. Right. This is not hate speech. This is thus saith the Lord. You mean Deuteronomy chapter 7. That's what we're hired to do. God told us to come out here and teach our people. That's what we're going to do. We don't hate our people. We love our people. And we're going to teach them thus saith the Lord. Read it. Come on. Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 1. When the Lord thy God shall bring them into the land, whither thou goest to possess it, and thou cast out many nations. What? And thou cast out many nations. God gave us the land. What is that land? Israel. It was originally called what? The land of Canaan. Guess what? Other nations lived there before us. But God loved us so much that he cast them out. He destroyed them. He sent bees and hornets against them to drive them out. That's what he did. Now jump down to verse 3. Verse 3. Neither shall thou make marriages with them. You got a flyer, my brother? Hey, give us a call. We in Tallahassee. Come visit. Okay. It says we shouldn't make marriages with the other nations. Read. Thy daughter, thou shalt not give unto his son. You shouldn't give your daughter to another nation. The only nation you should give them to is your own people. Read. Nor his daughter shall nor his daughter shall thou take not take unto thy son. 
Give me Toby 4 and 12. Toby, chapter 4 and verse 12. Come on. Beware of all whoredom. God calls interracial marriage whoredom. Even though it's marriage, it is an abomination. God hates that thing. Read. Beware of all whoredom, my son, and chiefly take a wife of the seed of thy fathers. See that? The seed of your father is your own people. We can't be laying down with the Chinese, with the Japanese, with the Caucasians, with the Arabs. No, they ain't our people. In fact, all of them had us in slavery. Every last one of them. That's what you got to understand. Those many nations, give me that in uh, 1 Maccabees chapter 2, verse 11. Or 2, 10, you know what I'm talking about. There's not one nation that didn't have us in slavery. All nations had us in slavery. You have to understand that. And yes, they know. They know who you are. You just don't know who you are. They know that you're the Israelites, but they ain't going to tell you that. Read. First Maccabees, chapter 2 and verse 10. What nation hath not had her part in her kingdom and gotten of her spoils? Meaning what? All nations got rich off of the Israelites. Meaning, when they bring us in as slaves, they became wealthy. Ain't that what happened here in America? Didn't we build all of this? And ain't they the greatest nation on the face of the earth? Every nation in, in uh, history, they have done that. You know the Great Wall in China? We built that. Right. Like, I know a lot of people don't know that. We built that. You know the pyramids in Egypt? We built that. Right. That's what I'm saying. Every nation, they did the same thing to us. God says, this nation, they're going to be the last ones. Get yourselves right, blacks, Hispanics, Native Americans. Get yourselves right so you can live forever with him and his father. That's what he's saying. That should have questions. Y'all believe that? Now, actually, yes, ma'am, my sister, yes, ma'am. Uh, this one? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Voice of, voice of many waters. For example, when Messiah, when he spoke, he could be heard miles down the street. He had the voice of many waters. Have you ever been to a, a waterfall? Yes, that's very loud. Christ's voice carried like that. That's what it's talking about. The voice of many waters. You can hear his voice echo. That's the type of... He didn't need a microphone. His voice carried. That's what that's talking about. We right. used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission Minor murmuring, omitting and missing the mark Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark We on Paul's mission We out on the road Purple and gold From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana Sierra Leone 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling These are our men repented at heart the scriptures is proof, I-U-I-C, we deliver the truth.